first week of uh, screenings after the lockdown. Right. <laughs> and uh, well, it's, an and honor, it's, an, it's an honor to be on your big screen. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So it's an honor for us to have you here and I'm very happy to have seen your movie was the first movie I saw in uh, the movie theater after the lockdown. Oh wow. And, uh, I was very, uh, I cried for the first uh, half an hour, oh. <laughs> both for the movie and for the emotion to be again in uh, the movie theater. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like a bit of a baptism, maybe, of the cinema. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'll, I'll and, uh, <laughs> as you know, we have here also Julia from uh, Mi Camera, the bookstore. I give her the microphone so that she can ask she can ask uh, you some questions. Sure, thank you. So hi. Hi there. <laughs> Nice to meet you. So it was a wonderful movie. So Thank congratulations. You. I really loved it and I almost cried. Uh, I'm, glad really... you, I'm glad you're able to control yourself. That's good. <laughs> yes, it, it's really amazing the way you managed to, you know, to draw us in, in the artistic process, in the, in the making of the record on every level. I mean, I, I very often felt like I was one of the people, you know, watching behind the screen, behind the window, and we were in front of a screen. But uh, it really took, uh, took us in, in the artistic process of making the, making the inspiration for an album. So it was really amazing. And uh, yes, uh, ah, yes, let me ask if they need the translation. Oh, sure. C'è qualcuno che ha bisogno della traduzione dall'inglese o...? Okay. Sì, ok, allora vabbè, prima di tutto eh, l'ho ringraziato e questo è stato il primo film che io ho visto dopo il lockdown al cinema e quindi mi sono molto commossa, in parte per il film e in parte perché finalmente vedevo un nuovo, di nuovo un film al cinema e, e Giulia eh, invece gli stava eh, dicendo dell'emozione causata dall'entrare all'interno di questo processo creativo, no? quindi così come le persone dall'esterno vedevano attraverso questo vetro eh, la creazione di questo album, così nel film c'è questa immediatezza, questa entrare proprio all'interno. Yeah, Shimans, um, uh, I know you've been, I mean, you have a long career as a photojournalist, especially in Afghanistan. You've been going there for many years, since 1994, I think, if I remember well and doing a very long-term uh, project uh, in Afghanistan particularly. You've been traveling all around the globe, but particularly there. And if I have uh, read accurately, you, you met PJ Harvey after um, publishing uh, your book. Uh, there was a successful book and exhibition that was also a documentary movie a short period later, like it became in 2011, documentary movie. Yeah, there was, there was a and film that, yeah, that I, I sort of collaborated with this, this American uh, production company. But Polly didn't see that. She just saw the book and the exhibition. The book, a darkness yeah. visible, right? Yeah. It was yeah. uh, was uh, the the yeah, it was a, a book made of uh, like 15 years of yeah. your of many trips to Afghanistan. So really yeah. a long term project, quite unusual for a photojournalist. And I was wondering how this, you know, going back to the movie that we just saw, how this collaboration started. Uh, I think it was 2008 when you met? Yes, yes. Yeah, 2008 was when the book and the exhibition came out and I got a call from her management um, asking would I like to talk to her, you know, because she was interested in meeting me and, and we eventually met and um, we talked about various things and may maybe I would take a photograph of her or something, but she wanted to meet and we, you know, we wanted to sort of see how we got on together and then I had just come back from Afghanistan when I finally met her, um, shooting video really for the first time for that film we were talking about, where I, I did interviews and I shot footage that would go with the still pictures that would make up that, that film about um, Afghanistan. And, um, and she said, oh, you, you, um, you make films as well. And I sort of, I was just beginning to make those. She said, well, would you like to make some music films for me? So that was Let England Shake. And we, she, she, she gave me the demo at this stage because it wasn't recorded yet. 
and uh, I listened to it and I thought about it and I listened to it and I came up with this idea of traveling around England to make short films for the album. Do you need tra to translate? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, io chiedevo come era iniziata la collaborazione con PJ Harvey, um, Shimons uh, uh, ha una lunga carriera di fotogiornalista, uh, soprattutto si è dedicato a um, un progetto veramente molto a lungo termine in Afghanistan, dove ha fatto tantissimi viaggi fin dal 1994, è un fotogiornalista molto famoso. E, quindi l'incontro con PJ Harvey avevo letto che era accaduto, era avvenuto nel 2008 quando lui ha pubblicato questo libro eh, che racconta un po' questa lunghissima esperienza in Afghanistan, è un libro che si chiama A Darkness Visible che è uscito nel 2008 e quando ha presentato questo libro PJ Harvey ha visto il libro e ha voluto incontrarlo e a quel punto ehm, è iniziata appunto questa, diciamo, questa conversazione, chiamiamola così, tra loro e, e lei poi ha scoperto che lui in realtà faceva anche dei video, tanto che poi nel 2011 uscirà anche una, una sorta di documentario, un film su A Darkness Visible, su proprio questo racconto dell'Afghanistan. Eh, ecco, eh, appunto... Eh, <laughs> it's difficult to speak and translate. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, so I was wondering because uh, you know I was curious because photojournal as a photojournalist I imagine um, but I don't know I imagine you were used to travel with a with a journalist you know from that was writing the text so it's amazing to see how this relationship uh, uh, when when photojournalism also was entering a crisis you know with magazines uh, with a big shift of yeah situation for for you as a photographer and that you managed really brilliantly to turn this collaboration between a photographer and a writer into a collaboration between a, a musician and a, um, you know uh, and a poet because uh, you also published by the way uh, a book of poems and images with this work on Afghanistan with PJ Harvey so you you kind of transformed your work in a way you know uh, You know, I was wondering how, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that, that was a question, basically. Yeah, no, I mean, I, the, the funny thing is that um, there wasn't really any, I mean, I didn't feel any transformation. I mean, I think that, you know, if you look at the book that we did together, a lot of the work was actually, I, I shot that work before I even met Polly. Um, there was work from Kosovo in 1998, 1999. There's work in that book from Afghanistan, even before 19, you know, 1994, 1996. Um, and then there was work I did with her in those places. So it's not the war, it's not, it's not the, you know, the, the work doesn't change, the context changes. So I was shooting those pictures, um, you know, they, they may not have been, but in fact, all the pictures in the book were never published before, um, pretty much, they were never published before. I was, you know, as you say, working as a photojournalist, the, the pictures that were published were probably more obvious pictures, you know, the typical kind of press pictures from Afghanistan or Kosovo. But sort of the more interesting ones weren't published, but I was still taking them because they were kind of really what I was feeling and seeing. And, um, and so, like a lot of, I think a lot of photographers and a lot of people that work in the press, we have other ideas and we have other um, visions and, and, and you know, things that we want to express. But the very narrow um, mainstream press uses, if you like, cliches. And so, but that doesn't stop us from continuing to do the work we want to do. Um, and so I think, you know, I always, I always had a certain um, um, way of working. And I, I, I didn't find it very different to, to go from what I was doing before to say working with Polly, because I just, I kind of continued the way I always would. And also working with her, it was no different in many ways than working with any writer I'd, I'd worked with. Sure, other writers had more experience of, of, of conflict zones and of asking questions and asking questions in very sensitive places. You know, that was the thing that she'd never done before. And that was remarkable, I thought, because within a very short amount of time, you know, she was able to do the thing. It's actually very difficult as a journalist, you know, to go up to somebody and ask them very personal stuff. Um, so... It was, it was like working with any other writer I've worked with, you know, slightly different, but not much. Okay, I would have said it was more different. It's, it's amazing to hear. Let me translate. Um, ok. Eh, eh, chiedevo, eh, perché il, lui appunto avendo lavorato come fondatore giornalista, in genere eh, quando, quando si lavora per le, 
eh, per i giornali ci si reca nei paesi, nelle zone di guerra accompagnati da, da un giornalista che usa la parola scritta, no? per cui c'è comunque una collaborazione con qualcuno, eh, il fotogiornalista scatta le fotografie e, e il giornalista scrive eh, i testi che poi vengono pubblicati sui giornali. Allora mi chiedevo come fosse cambiata, no? come fosse cambiata questa relazione di collaborazione con una persona lavorando con uh, un artista che usa invece la musica e la poesia, che è appunto un approccio profondamente diverso e poi lui ricordava che poi è una persona che non aveva mai viaggiato in una zona di conflitto e che è stato molto colpito da come invece P.J. Harvey è stata capace di... Um, uh, riuscire quasi subito a, a fare delle domande, a entrare in relazione, a diciamo, calarsi in un ruolo eh, che era comunque la prima volta che viveva. Eh, la mia domanda nasceva anche dal fatto, come diceva lui, che in quegli anni il fotogiornalismo era già praticamente in grandissima crisi, c'è stato proprio nel mondo della fotografia un periodo Um, di, grande, così, di grande trionfo delle fotografie sui giornali e a un certo punto questo mondo è entrato in crisi, quindi trovo davvero interessante come lui sia riuscito a trasformare il proprio lavoro e a renderlo ancora più interessante facendo un'operazione di questo tipo. Um, so, uh, the next question is, uh, yeah, talking about, you know, the making together in a way of this work, um, yeah, and by the way, you were the inspiration of the previous uh, album of P.J. Harvey in a way, you know, about uh, Let England Shake, um, for some things, because the, 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 the working with you inspired part of the writing of the lyrics of the album. Did I understand well? I don't know, actually, I'm not, no, I don't think so, because actually when she i mean she handed me the the um she handed me the demo of um letting them shake and um she yeah she would have seen my afghan work but i think i think she really you know because i mean that was very much about the first world war yeah. yes and she did a lot of research you know in, in into into history and and um uh she was even reading uh blogs by iraqi soldiers you know american soldiers were, um, fighting in iraq reading the blogs that you know they were published So she did a lot of her own research and when she when she gave me the demo she also wanted me to be honest and say look you know i've never been to a war zone i've never been to these places and i'm writing about these places based on research and what i'm reading am i getting it right you know is it really wrong is the tone you know is it is it sort of is it not comfortable you know and i i was amazed at what i was reading and hearing because actually it was incredibly uh, like that at the atmosphere and the things that you think about and she the things that she picked out and and, and wrote lyrics about um you know uh the little things it, it, it's very much i think uh you know she was writing a lot about soldiers and i think she was very much um uh capturing you know their emotions so um letting the shake was definitely her was definitely her you know um, yeah no i yeah, yeah i was talking more of a you know not of direct influence but of a Kind yeah, of there, might been, there might have been. There might have been some yeah. some level of it. Yeah, yeah. But, and, but anyway, coming to the this movie, um, it, it was uh, how was working. You know, I always had the idea that she was very much a person that is a lot in control of you know of her work, of the output of. So I was wondering how was the collaboration between the two of you. It was it was it was fine actually because. Um, You know, we, we both are very independent and we work very independently. And, um, you know, the collaboration as such was the discussions that we had before traveling. You know, the, you know, the decision to, to do this thing together, the decision to, if either of us didn't like what, what, what any, what, what, you know, how it was going or, or what the other person was doing and they didn't feel comfortable, we could just stop it. And, and the, that, that, you know, no questions asked. That was our, that was our deal. Um, so we had a real independence, you know, I, I work the way, as I say, I work the way I normally would work and she was new to this kind of work, but she was always taking notes, which is what she would normally be doing in other, in other ways of writing songs. So, um, we had our own independence and we, I think we really respected that. And, um, you know, I never told her to do anything and she never told me to do anything. Um, there was no, there was no editorial, uh, intrusion. By either of us you know and um you know it, it got a little bit tricky with maybe her management she 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 changed management from who she had before when i worked on the letting and shake and then she had this new management 
And that was a bit tricky at the beginning, uh, just because they have certain ways of doing things. But um, me and Polly, you know, we're friends now. And, um, you know, there was never there was never a problem of, of control. She, you're right, though. She's she <laughs> she is very much um, uh, into control and control of her work. Um, but she also very much respects the work of others. I mean, you can see that, I think, in the film with the other musicians. You know, she's very much in control of what's going on in that room, but she's getting the best out of those musicians and, and absolutely empowering them. And um, so she's a very good manager in that way. Forse dovrei ehm, chiedevo appunto eh, un po' rispetto all'album precedente di PJ Harvey con il quale lui ha comunque collaborato per i video, si sono conosciuti quando lei poi ha pubblicato questo album che si chiama Let It Go Shake e in qualche modo eh, i, i viaggi che hanno fatto insieme e lo scambio tra loro ha ispirato in parte quell'album che però in realtà poi parla più della prima guerra mondiale, comunque di conflitto e lui raccontava che c'è stato un confronto tra loro perché lei eh, gli ha chiesto, non essendo mai stata in una zona di conflitto, non avendo mai anche fortunatamente vissuto una guerra, gli ha chiesto se quello che aveva scritto aveva un senso no? rispetto a quello che lui invece aveva come esperienza di conflitto. Eh, e quindi c'è stato un confronto su questo, eh, appunto su, in questa chiave, però non un'influenza diretta sull'album precedente. E invece per quanto riguarda questo lavoro, ovviamente poi è stato sviluppato eh, in, insieme, è stato proprio il frutto di un percorso fatto insieme e gli chiedevo se eh, lavorare con P.G. Harvey fosse stato complicato, perché lei mi sembra una persona che ha... Uh, sempre il desiderio di essere molto in controllo, di avere molto il controllo dell'uscita del proprio lavoro, no? una persona che sa esattamente che cosa vuole e mi chiedevo se lavorare con un artista di questo tipo fosse stato complicato, avesse mh, dire, in qualche modo invaso invece il lavoro um, del regista e lui diceva che è sicuramente vero che lei è una persona che vuole avere il controllo delle cose ma eh, che ha molto rispetto per eh, il lavoro degli altri, che quindi in realtà non c'è stata mai un'invasione di campo da nessuna delle due parti e che questo in qualche modo si vede anche durante la registrazione del disco perché eh, lei si sa molto bene quello che vuole ma sa trarre meglio dagli altri, quindi ha un modo di lavorare molto bello. C'è stata qualche difficoltà con il management che è cambiato nel corso della realizzazione del film, eh, però niente di troppo rilevante. Um, I will leave you then, then the questions to maybe uh, someone in the audience has a question, but I have a last question. So I was curious, like seeing how wonderfully you've been collaborating on uh, the realization of this movie, I was wondering whether uh, you are planning or you ever thought of working on live concerts using visuals and images and, you know, creating like a, an experience that could be Um, that could be transformed also into a live experience. Like in a, I've seen like PJ Abbott, her last album is, you know, she has been working with a theater director. And uh, so I, I, would, I could easily imagine that you could plan. I was wondering whether you have ever thought of, us of using photography and video also during the live event and creating a show that would you know, use yeah. photography in a different way. Sure, I, I'm 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 sort of open to you know all all sorts of um, experimentation and, and 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 collaborations. I mean, we, we you know when we launched the book uh, Hollow of the Hand in the Royal Festival Hall in London, we had two evenings where um, Polly recited poetry on stage. She had two band members with her playing music. She, she and then she sang some songs from from the album that wasn't even recorded at the stage, um, and. I was on I was on the couch being interviewed at times about the experience, um, but but all the time we had uh, visuals from um, the book you know on the on the screen and also video. There were three sets of videos, some of the, some of which you would have seen in the film from the three places: Kosovo, Afghanistan, Washington D.C. So I have done something a little bit along those lines, but but um, but I you know I, I would certainly I would certainly consider. Because um, I think there's so much we can do with with imagery and sound and music and um, you know there's so many potentials yeah so much potential. So you're working on uh, some new project with her now? Not no not not now. Um, she's uh, I think she's doing a book a, a book of poetry um, and I've been working on another film. I'm I'm, I'm making a film in Ireland about. Um, 
an older man that um, I know who's a poet, um, very interesting man, a very interesting character. And um, so I'm very involved in that at the moment, but I'm sure we will do something in the, in the future. But, you know, that was a long project. Um, we started in 2011. That was the first trip to Kosovo. And really the, the film coming out last year was sort of the last of the three things, the album, the book and the, and the, and the film. And it was a long project. And um, so it's nice to do other things, but I'm sure in the future, you know, when we find the right idea, we'll, we'll collaborate again. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I've seen you recently released a, a, a photo book about Ireland on yeah. the anniversary of the yeah. independence of Ireland. So the Republic, I think it's called, right? And uh, so I guess so. The movie you're talking about is linked to this book as well. To no, this? no, it's not actually. In fact, I, I I shot that book while you know all this film and 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 the book, the other book was being you know was was happening. It was um that was in that time between 2014 and 2016. I was also shooting this book. Um, so you know with these projects, you you know you do them over years, but you're not you're not just working on those. That you know you're. We had to wait for funding to come in for the film, for example. And while that was happening, I was shooting the book. Um, uh, no, the the um, the the poet is somebody. I I made a film in Dublin in 2000 and, uh, 2013 that actually led to the book. Funnily enough, it was a short film. I did it for the New Yorker online and it was about Dublin and um, uh, I met this this poet uh, and and that's that's where the idea came from okay looking forward when is it coming out oh I, I, you know we, I, soon I, well, I, was, I no I was shooting it I was shooting it in March in Dublin yeah. and of course COVID happened and um, at the moment I'm there's an editor working in Ireland on some of the stuff there's a lot more shooting to do but I would love to have it I would love to have it sort of almost done by the end of the year. But, and what's yeah, and what's the name of the poet? Uh, his name is Pat Inglesby. He's the interesting thing about him is he's not known. He sells his books on the street, um, but his poetry is extraordinary. It's it's um, it's straight. It's straight from the heart, and it's sort of the, the the language of the of the ordinary person. But it's really beautiful and very absurd at times and funny. And very Irish, and uh, he is a genuine, genuine voice. I've got a, I've got a film called Home is Another Place, which is on my website, uh, shamusmurphy.com. You can see it there, and that's the film I made for the New Yorker. And in, in that film, there's two little examples of his poetry, and that's when I decided this guy is really worth, um, uh, you know, a small feature film because it, he's so interesting, and he sells his books on the street. And because he's been doing that for 25 years, he's been seeing what's happening on the street and he records what's happening on the street. And so he's like, um, he's like a chronicler of the streets of Dublin. Um, and it's amazing stuff, really amazing stuff. Um, um, appunto, tornando la domanda prima che gli faceva era se eh, con PJ Harvey, visto che hanno appunto avuto questa collaborazione che ha portato al film, se hanno mai pensato poi di trasformare questa esperienza di collaborazione in un'esperienza live? Quindi usando anche questa, la fotografia, l'immagine, il video e la musica in una, come dire, una nuova forma di spettacolo, soprattutto considerando che l'ultimo album di PJ Harvey l'ha vista collaborare con un direttore di te teatrale, quindi eh, su uno spettacolo che si ispira a un vecchio film. Quindi insomma, eh, trovo interessante anche capire se, se hanno immaginato una forma di collaborazione diversa e un'esperienza dal vivo che traducesse in qualche modo il dialogo che hanno e diceva che hanno fatto delle cose quando hanno presentato il film dove lei leggeva delle poesie, poi proiettavano delle fotografie, addirittura dei video, però, quindi hanno fatto qualcosa in questo senso, però insomma io mi riferivo a qualcosa di più ehm, appunto pensato proprio come un'esperienza nuova. Quindi, però, che potrebbe succedere, diceva eh, lui. E poi gli chiedevo invece del lavoro più recente. Eh, ha pubblicato, <coughs> mi pare l'anno scorso, eh, o forse addirittura quest'anno, un libro sull'Irlanda. Quindi il suo prossimo progetto in realtà è legato a questo poeta di Dublino, ehm, che in realtà non è direttamente legato al libro sull'Irlanda, che è invece era una dedica, eh, che era ispirato al centenario dell'indipendenza della Repubblica irlandese, però diciamo nel contesto di questi lavori che ha scattato in Irlanda, che poi il suo paese d'origine aveva incontrato eh, 
questo poeta che vende i libri per strada a Dublino aveva fatto un piccolo video per, mi pare, New York Times ehm, e poi si era appassionato a questo, a questo personaggio e ha deciso di dedicare un film più lungo a lui, che, a cui quindi sta lavorando e che forse uscirà entro la fine dell'anno. Io vi passerei il microfono, non vorrei eh, dominare se avete questo. delle domande. So he cried during the movie. I mean, you're making people cry over here. Okay, okay. <laughs> so it's two questions. And first of all, the, um, he's saying uh, like wonderful, amazing, beautiful movie. Thank you for making it. And uh, the first, quest first question is related to the edit process. So was it difficult to edit? You know, the, all the material you must have been shooting that looks wonderful. I'm sure he says you had a lot more. So how did you decide? How did you edit? And the second question is, did you ever think or did you ever do a show the movie there? Like, you know, like at the beginning of the movie, there's this cinema in Kabul. I, and uh, did you ever think of screening this movie there? Yeah, I mean, the, the film came out last year. I haven't been in Afghanistan since 2014. I'm trying to go at the end of this year. It all depends on travel with pandemic. But um, uh, I, I would love to do that. Um, I would love to do that. I don't think it's the sort of film that in that in those cinemas that you see in, in, in you know, the, 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 at the beginning of the film, that they would really be interested in this kind of film because they're that, that audience really like Bollywood films. Um, And there wouldn't be enough action for them with this film. But um, there is an Afghan Film Institute and um, I would love to screen it there. Um, it, it's almost like a kind of almost like the kind of uh, situation you're in there with a, you know, a, a really interesting, interested cinematic cineast audience. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I could find that audience, too, in other places in, 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 in Kabul and, and probably the rest of Afghanistan. So I would love to. I would love to do that. Um, Because I think it's very, very important for, you know, when you go to foreign places and you and you tell some some of their stories that that you can share it with them. Um, and, and it must be interesting for them to see how other people see them. You know, I, I love I love seeing films made by foreign filmmakers. I live in London now about London or about Ireland, where I'm originally from. I love seeing foreign you know, viewpoints on that. So. I would love to do that. Um, maybe when I go, go back at the end of this year, I'll try and set it up so that um, there could be screenings. Um, the first question about the editing. Yes, the editing was very, very complicated um, because, you know, the, 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 there was no script, obviously. Um, and the way the film evolved was very much depending on chance, whimsy, you know, our own decision to to go to these three places, you know, there, there, were, there were solid reasons, um, but but it was it was sort of, um, you know, it was very much spontaneous. You know, each day was quite spontaneous. Uh, in Afghanistan, I knew people, I knew places that, that I'd been to before. And when, when I invited Polly to come to Afghanistan, because I'd been there for a month, a month and a half before she arrived, I, you know, I, and I'd been there many times before, I sort of knew the things that might be interesting for her. Um, but even that, even with that, you know, it was very much go out, go somewhere and see what we see, what we find. Same with Kosovo. Um, you know, we I'd been there during the war. There are places I knew, like the monastery, that Serbian Orthodox monastery. I'd been there during the war. Um, so I planned to go there. But everything else was just, you know, whatever we found. So it was very spontaneous very random in some ways. And so the editing, as you can imagine, was not a very obvious connection with one thing or the other. So I, we had to build, myself and the editor, had to build these natural connections. And of course, when we did the travels, I didn't know, she didn't know, she was going to end up recording this album in the way that she did in Somerset House as an art installation. I had no plan at the very beginning to record the making of the album. I thought that was going to be a bit obvious, you know, a bit, it's not that kind of film, I thought. And this is about inspiration. This is about creative process. You know, making the album, that's almost like another film. But then when I, when I heard what they were planning to do, I thought I have to go and uh, I have to go and try and, you know, 
capture some of this and see see what it's like. And you know, after the first day, I realized I had to do the whole thing. It was five weeks. Um, so that then became something that was like a structure. You could you could you could pull in. There was something that you know they were making an album. The, the album, the ideas for the album came from these countries. I've got imagery from those countries. There are little stories and characters from those countries. So try and weave the two together. Um, you know, Trump came on the scene as I was as I was still filming, uh, still making the movie. And of course, it, 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 you know, it meant to me it would be crazy not to do something on Washington D.C. and not include Trump. And of course, I was at the rallies and I was there when he got elected, and I was there uh, the inauguration day. In fact. At the end, when the, there's a there's a march and there's a a bit of trouble on the street and the police, that was the uh, the women's the, the women's march the day after the inauguration. Um, so these were the connections that that the, the, the logic really came from the material in that way. Um, but if we hadn't had the album, it would have been a very different logic and it would have been a very different film. So there's no one answer to to you know how to how you edit something. Um, and this happened to be one version of what could have been many films, I think. Good questions. Ottima domanda. Eh, per quanto riguarda eh, l'ipotesi di appunto o la necessità di proiettare e presentare il film nei luoghi dove è stato girato, ovviamente sarei molto contento di mostrarlo lì, probabilmente non nel cinema che si vede nel film dove sono più appassionati a titoli bollywoodiani. Uh, ma uh, c'è un istituto, adesso non so come si chiama l'ente, comunque un istituto del cinema, eh, istituto afghanico, afghano scusa, del cinema, che uh, sicuramente sarebbe interessato, dove io vorrei tanto mostrarlo. Quindi quello verrà fatto, ovviamente non è stato ancora possibile perché uh, poi è arrivato il Covid e uh, le difficoltà anche a spostarsi. Um, per quanto riguarda invece la domanda uh, sull'edit, sull appunto sulla selezione del materiale, è stata un'ottima domanda, è stato molto complicato editare e comporre questo film perché eh, naturalmente avevamo un programma no? su cosa girare, su come fare una, una sceneggiatura che poi è stata stravolta un po' dal caso, un po' da, da, dagli accadimenti che sono avvenuti, per esempio in tutti i luoghi avevo dei posti, un po' come il monastero in Kosovo o dei luoghi a Kabul che avevo programmato, che conoscevo già, che avevo programmato di far vedere a PJ Harvey, ma ehm, tante cose sono accadute durante lo svolgimento, per esempio un, un elemento molto importante è la modalità di registrazione del disco non era ovviamente decisa quando abbiamo viaggiato, è stata decisa dopo, io non pensavo di includerla nel film perché trovavo che sarebbe stato un po' ovvio, ma invece questa modalità diciamo artistica partecipata um, di cinque settimane poi mi ha convinto in realtà a renderla come un po' la... la Uh, la spina dorsale del film, no? cioè poi un po' questo processo creativo è un po' tutto, la presentazione di questo processo creativo ha girato alla fine sulla registrazione del disco perché è stata decisa poi in quel modo lì, ma questo non potevamo saperlo prima. La struttura del montaggio è stata decisa nel momento del montaggio, lui ha detto che eh, c'era un programma ma non una sceneggiatura, quindi è stato in realtà tutto elaborato in maniera molto spontanea, eh, per cui poi dopo in fase di montaggio ha dovuto trovare una struttura eh, che ovviamente poi veniva da questo lavoro sull'ispirazione, sui luoghi, eh, su come nei vari luoghi eh, PJ Harvey avesse tratto ispirazione dalle persone che incontrava e quindi su come poi tutto questo fosse confluito nell'album e quindi la struttura è basata sul tema in sostanza ma è venuta dopo. Qualcuno ha ancora delle domande? I think we went through our questions. Okay. It must be very late there. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's okay. You know, it's okay. It's only, it's only 10 to 11. Yeah, it's all right. It's fine. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so we really would like to thank you for um, answering our questions and thank you for the beautiful work you've been doing. So we're looking forward to the next movie. Right. <laughs> and maybe next time you'll be here in person. I'd love that. I would love that. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thanks for coming to see the film and, and inviting me to do a Q&A. I'm really honored. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Really. Bye-bye.